All great questions. All right, to wrap things up here, Tom Brady says he feels embarrassed and shame on the Let's Go podcast after the play with him at wide receiver utterly failed on Sunday. Brady falling to the ground while the Seahawks intercept the ball. Shannon, do you believe Brady felt embarrassment and shame? Hell no. Nobody thought he was going to catch that ball anyway, Skip Bayless. Mm -hmm. Nobody thinks Brady is an outstanding athlete. So we already know we saw his catching abilities in ideal situation where the turf is not wet and it's, it's, it's a perfect situation, and he dropped it. So I was not – I'm not ashamed. He shouldn't be ashamed. He shouldn't be embarrassed because that's what – that's not what you're great at. You're great at throwing the football. Lead the catch into other people. Although in New England, he caught three passes. In 2001, he caught one for 23 yards. 2015, he caught one for 36 yards. And then in 2018, for six. So he caught three balls. <laughs> I believe he went back because he was uncovered the first time they tried the wildcat formation. And he said, throw it to me because he wanted – in one of his final years to <laughs> score a touchdown, especially in Skip, Munich. Want, Skip, you know good what I meant. Okay, but if they left him completely unguarded out there, and maybe, maybe, but it would have been <laughs> interesting. I, I would like to watch it. But here's the thing, Skip. That would have been more embarrassing. He's okay. that wide open. He's running okay. for a touchdown and let the guy from 20 maybe, yards back catch it. But, but I think he's just frustrated, not shamed. You know good what I meant. What I meant. You actually thought he was going to catch it, Skip. Yeah, I can catch. He's a very good He can athlete. catch the in the National backyard TV with B. Not down. catching the football in the NFL. Game. All right, guys. Awesome show. Unfortunately, we are out of time. We'll pick by Dak Prescott and the Cowboys getting upset against the Packers this past Sunday. They still find themselves as two point favorites, according to Box Bet Sportsbook, when they travel on up to Minnesota this weekend. Shannon, what does this tell you the Cowboys are actually two-point favorites at the Vikings? Well, it doesn't tell me anything. It's not like Minnesota's getting those points. I don't get why, get why people get caught up in this stuff like this. They were five-point favorites on the road again. Green Bay, what did that get y'all, Skip? You upset. Going to get you upset again, too. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Watch when you come back on Monday. Mm. Two weeks in a row, I won't see this. Mm. I'll okay. see this. <laughs> I would love it. Look. You, you booking I, it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. We're going to have some do on it. Yes, we are. Uh, okay, so mm -hmm. you're talking real big now. Yep. You always do this like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then come th Friday, you're like, I, I don't know, you know. No, I, I don't. I just need that. I just need that. I'm, I'm that. the opposite of that. <laughs> Look, your defense, Skip, you, you got to really, especially your run defense, and the way to protect your quarterback from because your pass uh, win rate is second to none. You guys can get after the quarterback like no other team in the NFL. Parsons, Armstrong, D-Law, all those guys, Fowler, you can get to the quarterback. But in the process now, you don't get a whole lot of credit for stopping the run. Who the number one rush defense? Uh, def nobody, nobody knows. Nobody cares. But you know who number one in sacks. You know who uh, 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 pressures and QB hits. And that's what has happened to your Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Your guys want to get those sacks and you're getting out of your lanes and people are gashing you. That is now, true. You gave, up two, you gave up 43 rushes for 239 against the, uh, the Bears. Mm -hmm. You gave up 200 yards against the Packers. Mm -hmm. You gave up 173 against the Cardinals. Cardinals, uh, oh, no, Minnesota went and got 147 against the Bills, seventh best rush mm -hmm. defense, 173 against the Cardinals, ninth rush defense, 117 against the Bears, 126 against the Packers. Okay. So they can run the football also. Now, I understand that you want to, you know, you figure you can get hits on, uh, um, and I'm sure DQ is telling them this, we get hits on Cousins, we can rattle it. Yep. That's what we're going to run old Dalvin Cook and Madison. Mm. Going to run them down. Now, now they're a wee. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, and guess what? Mm. He'll have another chain on after the game. Really? He's going to have a good go to six chains. chains. Mm. Yes. So, Skip, all that, I get it. Vegas, I, I, Vegas has been taking some hits lately. Because I'm sure people, but they looked at the Green Bay Packers, had lost five straight, five points. Man, they're not going to be able to think. The uh, Cowboys going to be able to, ooh, after what they've been doing, mm. cost them some money. Going to really? cost you again on Sunday, too. Mm. I think Kirk Cousins will be wearing eight chains after this game. Maybe let's go to nine because he's right now two and eight against Dallas, so it'll go to two and nine. So they ought to put nine chains around him. He might right? be number – you know what? After this week, he might be – they might be the number one seed in the NFC. Huh. You like that? We're about to chain him up as usual. <laughs> okay, okay. He'll so, never cut this time around. Here's my reaction to this. I was not only surprised by it, I was pleasantly shocked over this because this is all I need to know. The odds makers, and they're not wrong about this, 
they're they're looking at this saying, wait a second, that team is just better than that team, even at that team's place. What has happened the last two years? My backup quarterbacks have gone up to Kirk Cousins' home, his building up in Minneapolis, and Andy Dalton beat him two years ago, and then Cooper Rush beat him in Cooper Rush's first ever NFL start last year, about this time on a Sunday night game, solo stage game, in Minneapolis. So Kirk Cousins has lost back-to-back years to my backup quarterback. What does that tell you? It tells you we have owned Kirk Cousins since he was in Washington. Didn't I just tell you he's a different guy now? You don't think he's different than what he was in Washington? Dak is four and one against Kirk Cousins. Four and one. You like what you saw on Sunday from Dak? Great. I, I agree with you that Kirk Cousins has a new lease on life because when in doubt, he just looks for 18 and just throws it somewhere in that direction. And 18 often goes and snatches yeah, it out of the it's sky. It's working too. Okay, it, it is working because he is big time. <laughs> he has not put up big time numbers against my team because last year on Sunday night football in his house, Justin Jefferson caught two balls for a grand total of 21 yards. Can we hold him to that this team? It's doubtful because he's just flying high right now. But but if we could keep him under 100 yards, that would be pretty good. But you know what he did, Skip? Something that goes unnoticed, go back and look at the, uh, that long touchdown run on Dalvin Cook and see who got that fourth safety. Okay. It was 18. All so right. he might he might be required to do some other things other than catching 10, 13, 14 balls. But – Run the football early, get y'all on y'all heels, make y'all play that man cover so uh, Diggs can't get that help over the top, mm. and then watch you eat. Okay. Speaking of receivers, the guy on the other side this coming Sunday up at Minneapolis is a guy who wears number 88 for my team, and he had a coming out party at Green Bay, and it was the only silver lining to the lost day that was or lost night that was at Green Bay because – Dak threw him 15 balls. We just saw one of them, which was ill-fated. But out of those 15, he caught 11 of them for 150 yards and two touchdowns. It was his career day. And maybe it was a breakout, breakthrough kind of day in which the guy you call C.D. Dam suddenly said, Damn, Shannon, watch this. Oh, you, That's you, what he said. Okay. Uh, because I, I think he looked like a top 10 receiver. And maybe it's right on schedule for him to go up and show up Number 18 on the other side, that 88 is going to outplay 18 in that game. Mm. I think it's got potential. Think so? yes. yes, I do. Okay. All right, so what do I know about my team? Well, I know the odds makers are saying, well, we just saw what happened. Through three quarters, it was 28 to 14 Dallas at Green Bay, as it should have been, as you predicted it would be. You said 27 to 13. Mm-hmm. So if you'd had a three quarters prediction, <laughs> you would have been right. I said it was going to be 31 to 28 Dallas, and unfortunately, we did not even attempt the 53 yard field goal that could have made my prediction uh, on point. I know good and well, no guts, no glory. Skip Bayless ain't talking about no field goal. You should have kicked the field goal. You always like when they go for it on fourth down. Now you're talking I, about. I didn't like that. I didn't like the odds. I didn't like the feel. <laughs> I didn't like the way Dak had played through the fourth quarter in overtime. He was shrinking, and I. You, you think I was joking about this. I almost wish that we could have a new system in place in the National Football League whereby Dak was he could play the first three quarters and let Cooper Rush close the game. I believe Cooper Rush would have closed that game with a W. Well, first of all, you wouldn't have had that 14-point lead if Cooper Okay, Rush well, I there. just said let Dak play three quarters and then let him close. <laughs> no one's ever ball. done that, but in the other sport, they do that, they do right? That. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't know why. I know it's thinking way outside the box. Maybe that's the box that should be thought outside of. Okay.